And are you refreshed? Yes. Good. Your time is still up. <laughs> <laughs> we are eager to hear you. A quick comment before my, my actual question. Or I, a quick question, actually. Um, as I was driving up in my car, I was thinking, wouldn't it be wonderful if I get picked and there's a break so that I can think of my question better? <laughs> um, the question is, well, that, the quick question is, do you kind of know how everything is going to sort out? Well, when you, th when you think about what we've been telling you about how everything that you desire is in your vortex and your vortex is a vibrational reality and so and your vibrational reality is known by us it is known by source it is known by the larger part of you so it's not so much in other words it's always fun and it happens frequently where something like that happens which makes for a very good confirmation for someone but the important thing to understand it the, the it's not so much talking about what we know because yes of course we know <laughs> But there are a lot of things that are in your vortex that we know that you are not a vibrational match to. Okay. And so and you don't get it. So you don't get it. Like last weekend. <laughs> um, okay. Now the introduction to my question. It might be long, but um, I started listening to Abraham because of my mom. One day by chance, I was in my car. I mean, in my mom's car. I was driving it and there was a, a Wayne Dyer city. And then I, I caught my attention, and then I put another CD. It was one of your CDs. I had never heard of you. Um, and then just the information was really interesting to me. I was 21 by that time. And I got really into it, really into it, to a point I would like listen to it all the time. By then, I was, I was in, a, in a situation where I wasn't sure what to do with my career and with my life in general. My dad was trying to force me to do some career that I wasn't sure. Well, not force me, but like incline me in case he hears this. Um, <laughs> um, and he was, was trying to influence you to his version of what was best for you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Parents are that way. Exactly. Exactly. Um, there came a point where I just decided I was going to stop the career he was influencing me to do. Um, and I would listen to Abraham like the whole day. And I was so happy. I was so, so happy. There was this feeling inside of me. I could have. But often, often your parent would rather that you're in the struggling pile that is trying hard rather than the happy pile who is doing nothing. <laughs> yes. In other words, we understand what they're thinking because, because they have not actually been that acquainted with that many people in the happy pile. And so it's hard for them to accept that well-being will come to you because of your vibrational uh, alignment. They think that well-being only comes to you through struggle. Yes. And you get exactly to my question. I was so happy. I would listen to it like a good part of the day. I think at least five hours a day. And I would go on and do things in my day that made me happy. I would go to the gym. I do things that made me really happy. And there, there was this love inside of me. I couldn't describe. My mom told me she was meditating. When I used to live in Canada. And she was telling me that she used to meditate in Canada. And that she would feel this unconditional love and this thing inside of her. And I, I thought I was feeling the same thing without even meditating, just by listening to it. I, I was feeling this just like somebody would just come up to me and be mad or say something bad. And I felt like hugging them. I don't know. Like, <laughs> it was, it, I swear to God, it was this unconditional love. It's just this unconditional happiness. But then what you just said started happening. My parents were like, you're no, doing nothing with your life. What are you thinking? You're just doing nothing. What, what, do you think you're going to get money from listening to these CDs? You, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I was like 21 and confused and I'm like I hope I could <laughs> and then I started thinking what I wanted to do with my life and I started figuring out that I wanted to influence, influence people to this happy feeling we're just listening to lunch over there oh, okay um, and, then, and then I started thinking a lot <sighs> And then things started coming into my life. I would get mo uh, money from modeling 
I get like called for modeling and get good money and then I was like, see, I am getting money. And then, and then, and then stuff with acting would come up in Colombia. I was living in Colombia back then when I listened to Abraham. And then I was like, maybe it is going to work out. And then I started doing like, like a plan for my life because I was like, maybe they're right. Maybe I can't just stay listening to this the whole day and, and have a living. And then I started getting confused. Um, I would, I would want to be as happy as I want to, but I couldn't because I was worried about what was going to happen with my life. And how was, and I was worried that I was about to turn like, cause I listened to it for a good, a year. And I was like, I'm really going nowhere. I'm happy, but I'm going nowhere. <laughs> and, and then. And happiness counts for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> It counts even for though, everything. Even though everything that you want, it's whether happiness. it's a material object or a state of being or a pile of money or a relationship, everything that everyone wants is because they believe they will be happy in the finding of it. And so when you find happiness without going through all of those hoops, then uh, you think something is wrong. So now what? Okay. <laughs> so my question is, I'm still a little confused. <laughs> Because now, thanks to Abraham, now I have these big dreams. And just the way my life unfolded, I have these big dreams, really big dreams. I want to influence a lot of people. I discovered I have a passion for the acting and for the entertainment world. And, but not only that, I discovered also that I don't want to live in Colombia anymore. <laughs> I want to live here in, in California, in LA. I really love it. Just everything about it is just wonderful to me. I have this really big dream, but sometimes then I get confused to if I should well, just feeling, be happy. The feeling of confusion is negative emotion. The feeling of confusion is outside the vortex. The feeling of confusion comes when you look at what is, and what is is not a vibrational match to what you desire. So it's, we really like the way you have presented this question with the perspective of your parents, because your parents have behaved like normal parents would behave and you, and you have responded to your parents in the way a normal person would because it, it's what we were talking about earlier when much of the world is behaving and performing in one way then when you step freakishly outside of that there are a lot of people that would say you, you need to get your head out of the clouds or your head out of mm -hmm. the sand and mm -hmm. you need to begin to apply yourself and we the message that we are offering here is not a message of inactivity. It's not a message of not applying yourself, but it is a message of getting into the vortex and then. We're just encouraging you to find the leverage of alignment and then apply yourself. And the thing that you are demonstrating here in your conversation is that because of your attention to what's happening in terms of no work, let's say, or to what's happening in terms of disapproval from worrisome parents, your attention to them takes you out of the vortex. So you're not giving this the, the um, comparative experimental procedure that you think you are because in other words the way you're presenting this here is well I could be happy or I could be I could do what my father is coercing uh, slash influencing slash wanting me to do and we say but those while those two choices are available you're not choosing one over the other you're you're wanting to be happy while you're worried about what they think so you're not happy Okay. So, so what you're doing, it's like having your foot in both worlds. You've got your foot in the, in, in the out of the vortex world because you're worried about what your parents are thinking and you're not, you're not applying yourself in the out of the vortex way that most people apply themselves. Isn't that interesting? We talked earlier that there's this pile of people out there acting, 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 doing all of this action, struggle, 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 and those who struggle with the most determination win in terms of the paltry pile that they split up among the, each other. In other words, when you're outside the vortex and struggling, the harder you struggle, the, the more you will gain in relationship to the others. When you get into the vortex where there is no struggle and you stay there long enough that you begin to 
decipher and you begin to align with what's in there so that the the true wonderful things begin to manifest now you are experiencing life in a way that cannot even be compared don't you find it have you done any comparison of the way people live and earn in other words is there any actual fair comparison between the 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 people who are making their living through action with their bodies and the people who are making their living through alignment in other words there are people that are making millions of dollars for a few hours of work there are people who are making billions of dollars there's no way that you can even equate their action with what they're getting it just does not line up at all you have to accept that there's a whole other thing going on and what that other thing is is the leverage of alignment it's the leverage of the vortex so when you are able to get into the vortex and stay there and not be constantly dragged out as people are making you review the manifestation too soon, if you are able to stay in the vortex so that you can align with the dreams that you've put there, we promise you they are there. We promise you the, the path to fulfilling them is there. You've just got to get in there and stay there consistently enough by letting the vortex train your vibration into the frequency of that, that you light up and that others light up that give you the pathway to what you're looking for. There are so many people who are famous and wealthy and secure and understood today in the very field that you are talking about who at one time were standing where you're standing. In other words, it's just a vibrational shift that is necessary. But now we're going to speak this. We said it already, but we're going to say it clearly. When you are in the vortex, but you don't stay and you pop out, and you're in the vortex and you don't stay and you pop out, and now, now you're often not in the vortex, but you're also not willing to do the work that the other people who are not in the vortex are doing, that's when your father <laughs> then makes that comparison. You're not doing anything. Well, okay. you certainly could be doing something, you say, but if the doing something jeopardizes my alignment, and so what we would like to say to you first, on behalf of your father, is that <laughs> it is possible for you to do things in terms of action while not in the while while waiting for the alignment to reveal bigger things for you it's possible for you to stay in the vortex and still be inspired in other words the confusion that you feel we're not telling you to have non action we're saying get into the vortex and then esther and jerry they are amazed at how much in the vortex magic it's not magic, but it feels like it when you relate your life to the lives of others. How much in the vortex magic happens in their life, and yet they still are very active in a, in a lot of things. They're editing their own recordings. Esther is still driving their vehicle from place to place. In other words, there are all kinds of action things that they still do that someone might look and say, well, why are you doing that? Why are you, why are you doing these struggling things? And Esther's answer is, I want to do it. They got hundreds of letters every month of people who wanted to drive the bus. And Esther would say, I want to drive the bus. I want to drive the bus. I, it's my bus. She won't even let Jerry drive the bus I want to drive the I want to drive the bus in other words there are all kinds of action things that you find yourself wanting to do so what you want to say to your father is that my action is irrelevant while I know that you cannot see it and I promise you that I'm not planning a life of inactivity but I am planning a life of inspired activity because I believe with everything that I am that when I'm inspired to my action not only will the action be huge and pay off big but it will be really joyful action and one thing dad I really want you to know I and I don't want this to upset you but I refuse to do stuff that makes me not feel good so don't despair I'm gonna do a lot of stuff and it's all gonna make me feel good and someday you're gonna be really proud of me but in the meantime you're not being proud of me is not good for either one of us. So I would like you to deactivate me from your awareness if you could. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, you know how far you're going to get with that. De don't think about me. Deactivate me from your, from, from your awareness. If, you, if you'll stop worrying about me, then I'll stop worrying about you worrying about me and then I'll be in the vortex and my success will come faster. Well, that's not going to happen. He's not going to deactivate you, but you can deactivate him you can make him less important by 
not by pushing against him he there's no one on the planet that cares more about you no one on the planet who cares more about you but somebody who cares about you from outside the vortex is a big drag